All right, this is the Baron that we talked about in the uh, for a few minutes I, when I was talking about the carving tools in Japanese printing. And this is the traditional Japanese Baron made with the rope inside, that twisted rope that's inside and forms the pad for the, and this is the, this is the bamboo sheet, then this is the bamboo stretched across and it's held like that. And that's what primarily I'll be printing with in the process. This would be the printing press. It goes to the 16th century Japan. So. Very important that you clean your block very thoroughly so you don't get traditional Japanese brush. <laughs> and it's like, like, like the hake brushes, it's the bundles of hair of, are tied together and it works both ways. So once you're finished brushing it out, you might go over it with this other end just to make sure you got out everything that's there. Once, once, we, once we have that, I'm going to be using a mulberry paper that's a bleached mulberry. Bleach, just as it sounds, it's whiter than it normally would be. And this is from Thailand. And the, Thai, the Thais are making the paper, the traditional mulberry paper, which is the traditional source of most Japanese prints and a lot of the a lot of the prints that you see in the United States today. We'll be using a speedball professional black ink. Which is made here in the United States. The first one we're going to do will be with the, uh, Jap uh, be the Japanese inking brush. And you can see, again, it's sewn, uh, it's sewn together. some ink on it. These are water-based. Japanese inks are water-based and, and the, uh, a lot of the speedballs uh, were oil-based or water-based for kids. Now they make it with real pigment. This is a pigmented ink. Very important, the difference between a pigment and a dye. Okay, I don't want to, with this, I'm going to go. And I want it very painterly. And so I'm going to pick up some of the cuts in the back and give it that. Yeah. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna take this. This will be washed out, but I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the, uh, the paper down. Press it with your hand. Press it so it doesn't move. The baron is going to go in a circular motion. And then a zigzag. The circular first to hold the paper down after you put it down with your hand to make sure it's not gonna slide around. Okay, look and see here what we have is I'm holding the baron. So this very painterly feeling to the block, just with the light coming through, much like my uh, like a like I'm drawing into the block. So again, this is not to make a black black on the outside here. As I push the push this on the side, they are going down. It gets lighter as it's off to the side. So it's a very painterly feeling, and that's what the uh, Japanese, like we talked about, Munakata. Munakata would have that kind of. I will take this and put it in my rack here to dry. So now we're going to do a western with a roller. It'll be even, more even. Not, not even even because I made this to be like a painting. Because that's really where I'm at. Western wood block, we use rollers and different kinds of rollers. You have hard rollers like these, soft, soft on the front, but hard inside. So it's very short, very less ink. If I'm using less ink, I would use these. More ink, I'd use these. And, uh, and if I wanted everything exact, I'd use this one here. The Japanese are making these now too, but that's, but the important thing about the roller is that uh, it's the amount of ink that I'm going to carry with it. And this, these plastic handle ones are very good for, for children and they're made by Speedball too. And, but they're very good rollers for professional. They, they work very well for both. Like this is for a lot of ink, a big area. And you can see it's a professional roller and not recommended for kids or not recommended for beginning students either because you get an enormous amount of ink on there. I don't want an enormous amount of ink on this. I, I want it to be more painterly, but this one will be more. I'll be using this roller here, which is semi, semi soft. In other words, it doesn't go far in. Therefore, I won't be covering with a lot of ink. 
the, the farther this goes in, the more ink it'll pick up. I will put the ink on across in a longer way instead of the short that we did with the Japanese brush. And I'm going to roll it. So I want an evenness that I don't get in the brush. Okay. But I still want that painterly quality. You see, already things show up more. Okay, I'm pushing it around a little bit because I don't want it to be even even. And I have a lot of scratches and things in there that I, that I wanna be part of it. Once again, we'll be using the, 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 the mulberry paper from Thailand, the bleach mulberry. This could be used in classes and things because you, because the price isn't it, like the Japanese papers go as high as $20 a sheet, some of them. But these, this is the kind of paper that you'd use if you were definitely teaching a beginning class or an advanced class could, would be using the same sheets. So the paper and this fit the next, and I'm doing this again with my hands, but look at how much more ink you see, the, that part. use a lot of things I have up here. This is something that house painters use, but it works very well for a, a smooth, like on a linoleum block. Okay, so. So I get a, tar a much different feeling from each one. From the roller and the, uh, and the print brush, this is painting. This is really painting the, you're painting the block. Here, you're printing, you're, you're actually making it more even. But because I have all those textures, the textures can show up very well, but not is not like this. This can here. Let's. I've got this upside down. I don't know what I was doing here. Can you get the idea now? Okay, if I'm gonna take this and leave it, I wanna make grays because, you know, I could paint on this. I could put oil pastel on the paper. I could do, this paper is very good at taking mixed media. 
Now, this paper is not handmade. It's machine made. And how you can tell is you don't have the mark down here of the, of the mold, the mold mark. There's no mold mark on this, but then you're not paying $20 a sheet either. So. Now, this has a rougher side and a smoother side. And this time, and that's the rougher side I was using before. Now I'm going to go use the smooth side and I'm going to leave the ink, the, just the ink that's on there, just to get a hazy gray that I may use in a painting or a mixed media. And there's that light gray that I can go back and paint into and just use it for something. But I want to see, I want to see which way I want the, the, the addition to go. Because I don't want the cutting even, it's going to be important that this sort of thing shows in the block itself. I may end up using the end of the block for something else also. So it offers me a lot of possibilities here by not making it a straight print, but making it a lot of ways to use it and mix media and make a face that's more related to what I would do in a painting. 